This is a 1911 Fiat S76 that was built to beat the land speed record. It was timed 135 miles an hour in 1913. A family obsession, I think, the last 10 years they put up with me and they put up with this. My father had Victorian cars, all made before the turn of the century. So they were great fun, you know, flat out at eight miles an hour, cruise at four, break down every 600 yards, that sort of thing. But when I was younger, they weren't very exciting and I wanted something more, more fun, more fast. I've always wanted to restore a big chain drive Edwardian car and a great friend of mine who is a Fiat enthusiast said, well, there's only one car. It's the Fiat S76. And today was a bit of a challenge to drive at 150 miles from Bristol to Goodwood and we've had the most sensational trip. In 1911, one of the works drivers drove a Brookens and then he was entered for a race meeting two weeks later in Middlesbrough. That's 300 miles, 400 miles. Today is a long journey. In 1911, he decided the car was so good to drive on the road, he drove it from Brooklands in Surrey to Middlesbrough. An English mechanic went with them and the English mechanic didn't speak any Italian and he couldn't get the guy to slow down as they went through towns and villages. And because of the noise, people stopped on the pavement and looked as the car went past. And as the car went past, it blew their hats off and singed their hair. And so this, in fact, the journey today, the 150 miles to Goodwood today, is the longest journey the car's been on for over 100 years. We've had a great time coming here, though. The best bit was on the motorway because the poor thing doesn't like going too slowly. It's very high geared. So when we got the motorway, it was just fantastic. <laughs> Obviously, we were kept well within the speed limits. Uh, yeah, it's effortless. It's so high geared at a thousand revs, your modern car, your modern family car at a thousand revs, maybe ticks over at a thousand revs. Um, and in top gear, at a thousand RPM, this car's doing 128 miles an hour. That's the gearing. So coming down the most way, we got into fourth gear, top gear for the first time, maybe 300 RPM, 400 RPM, which is faster than most of the cars on the motorway, and it was just effortless, it was just brilliant. This isn't an easy car, and it, everything it does is always a bit extreme, it's quite an extreme car, so it, it, it scares me, it just scares me. It scares me starting, it scares me driving it, but today it's proved, I enjoyed the last 20 miles, the first 120 miles was, was a little bit anxious, the last 20 miles the car was going much better, it was warm, it was just, it may look silly now, but in 1910 it was, it was cutting edge technology. It was the fastest thing on the planet. It was twice as fast as the fastest aeroplane, which, okay, aeroplanes in 1910 weren't very fast, but if you said to somebody today, knowing what you knew about aeroplanes, and you said, I've got a car outside that will go twice as fast as the fastest aeroplane, well, you wouldn't get in it. You'd think you're, you're completely mad. And I think in 1910, when this car was around, people thought it was insane. It was so fast. A friend of mine followed me with a 1903 Mercedes. The fun bits was pulling into petrol stations because it blows two yards of flame approximately out the side of the bonnet when you're driving it. And when you pull into petrol stations, they, they don't like mobile phones, but so flames cause them, makes them very upset. Uh, I will always remember the experience of, of following the Fiat down the motorway. Um, I will never forget it. It was, uh, it was just an incredible experience. It, it, it hasn't done a journey like this for a hundred years and it takes someone like Duncan uh, who treats it like a normal car. I think that's very important. We pull into a petrol station and we explain to the guy on the counter, said, please, please, there will be a little bit of flame when we start the car before we leave. It's, you know, don't panic, it's fine, it's all under control. And when we fired the car up, as we were pulling out the garage, all the alarms went off, the fire alarms, the garage went off, and anyway, we just drove off. We thought there was no point in staying. It's got a really complicated clutch. The clutch is a 90, it's got 90 plates. A modern car has one plate in the clutch, this has got 90 plates in it. When it's oil, it's got it for plates. It needs cleaning, graphite, it's drying, graphite, and put it back together again. It'll work brilliantly for another 150 miles. The clutch has done really well all day, but it's just got hotter and more grumpy the last five miles because of the traffic. So we have a problem in the car now where the clutch won't disengage. So, right, or do you want to just go for it? Because if it doesn't, it might not even move. Let me put it into gear. 
we'll see how friendly it is. Yeah, let's put his gear and then if you dip the, you stay in there, you can do it all, can you? Dip the clutch. <laughs> you get in this way. What for love? All right, love. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Hang on, I've got to put it in gear for that. Let me put it in gear. Not doing Keep pouring, just pour it in. Just pour it in. How much though? Go down, pour, just pour away. <laughs> You know, you could put modern clutches and stuff in, you know, you can do lots of things these days. I just wanted it to be like, I wanted it to be really authentic. The authenticity is the important thing and this is what the clutch, this is the original clutch, it's what the clutch was like. I don't mind, it's, it's not a problem, it's part of the fun of having something this old. If it was easy, everybody would do it. It's not easy at all, but that's part of the enjoyment of having it, really. Although that seems a bit weird, but it's part of the enjoyment of having it. <laughs> And the clutch has just had enough. It won't disengage because it's all, it just needs taking apart and cleaning and putting back together again with graphite powder. But if you haven't got any, I've got some in Bristol. No, okay. Don't worry. I've got to go, Ollie. Sorry, I'll, I'll give you a shout later. Okay. Fab. Okay. Cheers, mate. The nuisance is we've got to take the clutch out. It's, we can fix it. We've just got to take the clutch out, clean it, put it back together again. It'll be fine for tomorrow. And I've got to drive it back to Bristol, so we've got to fix it. Okay.